Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this um, as short as possible. Uh, I went on Twitter today, or actually yesterday, and I have uh, Clifford Pickover. He's a he's a writer uh, who writes all about math and science and whatnot. And uh, he had a question, I guess, that he came across, and it's a story of um, an angel guarding uh, the Garden of Eden. And apparently there you've got apples and grapes, and uh, if the product of the number of apples and grapes is equal to a thousand times the sum of the number of apples and grapes in the Garden of Eden, then how many apples and grapes do you have? So, so basically we, we have an equation that uh, I think we have one equation with two unknowns, which is a very bad thing. Now when you look at this, you know, you start to try and start thinking what the heck's going on. And, you know, this is x times y, and this is something that's linear in x and y. So you start tooling around with ideas of, you know, stuff like this, and where does it intersect? I mean, obviously if there were no, if there were no apples and no grapes in the Garden of Eden, this equation would hold, because 0 times 0 is equal to 1,000 times 0 plus 0, which is 1,000 times 0, which is 0. So, yes, one, one very uh, uh, simple and, um, what's the word, there's a word for this, uh, basically it's an answer that doesn't really do anything for us, it's a trivial answer, is that if there were no apples and no grapes in the Garden of Eden, this equation would hold, but of course then this wouldn't make any sense. So, what I did was I went to, I went to MATLAB and I, I basically created a very simple program in MATLAB that had nested for loops. So from n equals, from x equals 1 to a million, or actually, well, I, I'm running it at a million now, but I did it for 10,000 to make this thing run quick. From x equals 1 to 10,000, and then nested within that for loop from y equals 1 to 10,000, okay? Uh, if this product equals this product, then, you know, put the value of x and y in an array, or print it out, or whatever. So, you know, I got, from, so from, from x equals 1 to 10,000 and y equals 1 to 10,000, when you look at all the possible pairs, I got 19 answers. So I, I got 19, 19 numbers, or, and, and they, actually they were, um, uh, you know, eventually the number of apples becomes the number of grapes, etc. So, for example, 2,000, 2,000 apples and 2,000 grapes, that's 4 million and that's going to equal a thousand times 200 plus 200, which is 400. Or actually, um, I'm sorry, my math's a little goofed up here. It's, uh, it's really early in the morning. But but you get the you get you get the dr the drift, right? So for example, uh, 2,000 2,000 apples and 2,000 grapes. The product is 4 million. And then 1,000 times uh, 2,000 apples and 2,000 grapes is a thousand times 4,000 is 4 million, okay? So right off the bat, if, if you've got 2,000 apples and 2,000 grapes, that's a solution to this, to this problem, okay? It's not the only one, but letting X range from 1 to 10,000 and then letting Y range from 1 to 10,000, I got uh, 19 possible pairings. Half of those were, so for example, so for example, um, 2,000, 2,000 is an answer for x, y. So of, of the 19 possible solutions, um, nine of them were x was lower than 2,000, and then you got 2,000, 2,000, and then the remaining nine were basically these numbers flipped. You following what I'm saying? Okay. So, you know, scoping this out in MATLAB or Python or whatever or C++ or whatever, whatever, yeah, it's easy to let the computer do the work. But I was thinking, you know, is there a way to sort of get this kind of a thing? And then, and then, just just a short while ago, I said, is there any way that I could parameterize what's going on here? Uh, I don't know why that word popped in. It's just, I just, you know, when I've got like, for example, trigonometric functions, and you're doing your thing, you know, you can parameterize them. And have have like for example, if you're doing cardioids or whatever, you can parameterize the uh, functions. So I said, what's going on here? What's basically going on here is that I'm multiplying two numbers here, 
and I'm multiplying two numbers here. Okay, so I guess the first thing that I did was I said, oh yeah, what's, what's 10,000? It's 10 times 10 times 10, which is 2 times 5 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 5, which is 8 times 125, et cetera, et cetera. And that got me thinking that I've got two numbers that I'm multiplying here, and they're the same as two numbers that I'm multiplying here. So in a sense, they must share factors, right? I mean, they have to because you're multiplying. Uh, it's just that you're doing something squirrely here with this limit or this, this constraint, actually. Uh, but basically, you're taking two numbers and you're multiplying them, and then you're taking another two numbers and you're multiplying. For them to be equal, they gotta, they got to have the same factors, okay? So if I got if I got 3 times 12 on the one side, and then I've got, well, what's this? This is 3 times 3 times 4. If I've got 9 times 4 on the other, 36 is 36, right? They must all share the same factors. So I said, is there, is there a, a, an angle or a cheat that I could use to leverage my way out of the single equation into unknowns? So I said, let me try and parameterize this. But since I'm dealing with factors, let me let x equal t, and then let, let, let y equal alpha times t, which is just another factor. All right. So basically, x is, x is some number, which itself could be a, you know, uh, a product of numbers. And let y equal equal basically x, but times some factor, okay? So it's probably it's not going to give me the universe of numbers, but it should give me some numbers, right? So if, if this is my parameterization, then x times y is t times alpha t, or alpha t squared. And then 1,000 times x plus y is 1,000 times t plus alpha t is basically 1,000 t times 1 plus alpha. So I've got alpha t squared equals 1 plus alpha 1,000 t. Now, this may look like this may look like one equation and two unknowns, because now instead of x's and y's, I've got alpha's and t's. hope you can see this okay. I mean, obviously, this still looks like and probably is one equation and two unknowns, but now I'm treating alpha as a number and t as a variable. So now I'm going to bring this over, and then I got alpha t squared minus this is zero. And then factoring out a t, then t equals zero, which is going to give me the, the uh, trivial solution of x equals y equals zero. Or I've got this other equation, this other factor here, alpha times t minus one plus alpha times a thousand. That's going to equal zero. So that means that alpha t equals one plus alpha times a thousand, or t equals one plus alpha over alpha times a thousand. Now again, this looks like it's one equation and two unknowns, except I'm treating this as the variable and this as a constant. So then what I started to do was I said, okay, okay, let's let alpha range from one to two to three to whatever. And what I have found is that when, 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 you know, the, I, you know, X is T, is t is t is one plus alpha over alpha times a thousand, and that's what x equals. Okay, based on this, you know, parameterization as I call it. So that means, so that means that if x equals t and y equals alpha t, and t equals one plus alpha over alpha times a thousand. Then I can just start plugging in for alpha equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and seeing what I get. And lo and behold, for alpha equals 1, if alpha equals 1, then 1 plus 1 is 2 over 1 is 2 times 1,000, which is 2,000. And, and y then becomes 1 times 2,000 is 2,000, and 2,000, 2,000 is a solution. If I let alpha equals 2, then I get x equals t equals 1 plus alpha over alpha times 1,000 is, in this case, 3 over 2 times 1,000 is 1,500. y is alpha t, so alpha is 2 now, okay? So 2 times 1,500 is 3,000. That's a solution. If I let alpha equals 3, x equals t equals 1 plus alpha over alpha times 1,000 is 1 plus 3 over 3 times 1,000 is 4 over 3 times 1,000 is not an integer. Oh, by the way, yeah, the number of apples and grapes have to be basically whole numbers or natural numbers. Actually, technically, they're, well, if you include 0 as a possible solution, that makes them whole numbers, although, although the natural numbers are 
integers or whatever. Uh, I can't have a fractional apple or a grape. So this is not a solution. This will not work. If I let alpha equals 4, then x equals t equals 1 plus alpha over alpha times 1,000 is 1 plus 4 over 4 is 5 over 4 is 1.25 times 1,000 is 1,250. y is 4 times t is basically 5,000. This is a solution. So wherever alpha gives me uh, an x that is a whole number, I'm getting solutions for I'm getting solutions for the number of apples and grapes in the Garden of Eden. Where alpha is going to give me a ratio here of one plus alpha over alpha that is not that doesn't give me an, I mean this is like you know the, the six 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 whatever where it doesn't give me a an integer. Obviously, I can't have a solution. So, what I'm going to do is is I'm going to I'm going to keep working these out. But I think that this trick. And I, I, I apologize. I, 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 I did just sort of think about doing it this way as a way to relieve myself from the tyranny of one equation, two unknowns. And this, this, I call this parameterization. Maybe I'm not using the, the, the proper terminology or whatever. Um, but I'm getting, but, but simplifying this from a concept where it's basically two variables to a variable and a, a constant that I mean, you know, it's still two variables, but I'm, I'm treating them differently, and I'm also taking advantage of the the fact that I'm multiplying two numbers by two numbers. Two, I'm multiplying two numbers, and they're equal to the product of the two numbers. They must all share the same factors. So, you know, I've I've got a I've got a way. I mean, th this appears to be working. Uh, I've got a way where if the one plus alpha if the 1 plus alpha over alpha times 1,000, if it gives me an integer, then I'm going to get an integer for y, and based on how this is set up, this should work. Uh, I'm inviting comments to this, uh, and again, I came across this. I went to Twitter, and I've got Clifford Pickover on my Twitter feed, and he had the question, basically, uh, you've got an angel, and it's the Garden of Eden, I guess, and they've got apples and grapes. And if the number of apples times the number of grapes is equal to a thousand times the sum of the apples and grapes, then how many apples and grapes do you have? Um, again, as I said when I ran, when I when I programmed this in MATLAB, for example, from 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 x equals one to ten thousand, and also y equals one to ten thousand, and looking at those pairings of numbers, I got a total of nineteen possibilities or possible answers. The, uh, the first nine, there was a guy in the middle, and then there was the last nine, so there's your 19. This guy was 2,000, 2,000, so 2,000 apples and 2,000 grapes. And as X increased up here, up to 2,000, and then on this side it decreased. So basically the apples and the grapes, the numbers switched. Uh, but I think that this, this trick here, uh, at least it, it seems like it's working. I, I mean, I am getting, I am getting solutions uh, to this to this problem, and and maybe maybe it's not the, every solution, but it seems like it's working okay. So I'll play with this a little bit longer, and I'll put in the comments section uh, what I what I find out. But uh, I'm I'm welcoming comments about this wacky idea that I had that seems to be working. Thank you very much.